The internet is a beautifully disturbing place as we know it. Just that, what a lot of us know to be the internet only composes roughly 4% of the World Wide Web. This is known as the clear web, and it's where we're on right now, pages that you're able to find on Google and other search engines, and that you can access directly from your search. Under the clear web, we can find the deep web, and deeper than that, we have the dark web. But what is the dark web? Why hasn't it been taken down if it's as scary as it sounds? And why should regular people like you and me who don't operate on the dark web be aware of what it is? Today on Cognitive Culture, you'll learn about the dark web. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you see so I can continue to make these happen. To help illustrate the concept and difference between the webs, I'd like to use the proverbial iceberg, where we can see about how much of the internet is occupied by what, so you can kind of visualize the takeaway here. The deep web includes all of the information that you cannot access publicly, which means it will not come up in a Google search because it's not indexed. It can be conventional pages protected by a paywall, which is when a website doesn't let you move on until you pay the subscription fee but also files saved in Dropbox and files saved in the servers of your provider, government information, educational journals, and a lot of other information that for one reason or another isn't indexed on the clear web. Not necessarily dangerous information at all, just kept away from the general public. The dark web exists below the deep web, but also as part of it. It's like a terribly dangerous street in an already anonymous neighborhood. Unfortunately, really bad people exist in the world. And while they're a very small percent of any given population, the majority of them are on the dark web, since here they can communicate with each other about sinister topics, buy and sell illegal things ranging from drugs all the way to sex and people. So where did the dark web come from? Like other areas of the internet, the deep web began to grow with the help from the US military, which sought a way to communicate with intelligence assets and Americans stationed abroad without being detected. Mathematicians at the Naval Research Laboratory began working on the concept of onion routing in 1995. Their research soon developed into the Onion Router Project with funding from the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. Which answers the next big question, how do people get to the dark web? To enter the dark web and all of the websites in it, you have to download a special browsing software, like the one I just mentioned, Tor, the Onion Router. This browser disguises your identity by moving your traffic across different servers and encrypting that traffic so it isn't traced back to you. Anyone who tries to find you would see traffic coming from random nodes of the Tor network, bouncing off to different locations around the world rather than your computer. Your IP address would jump from the US to India to Germany and most other countries in a matter of minutes, rendering you untraceable. Unless you buy something, here you run the risk of that being a fake website planted by the Department of Homeland Security, or even a real website that's been discovered by authorities and just being monitored to soon be caught. So if you go ahead and purchase something from the dark web, it's a real possibility that very soon you'll have serious, irreversible trouble knocking at your door. Pieces of software like Tor essentially give you the first layer of access to the dark web. But beyond that, many pages require passwords or invites for access. You can see how it starts to make sense that a lot of illegal things happen on here, since the moment you're on it, you're basically invisible, especially if you know what you're doing. As the name suggests, the dark web is really a place where the darkest parts of humanity are exposed, and even celebrated by like-minded individuals. The dark web has been responsible for selling and trading of opioid drugs, credit card numbers, fake IDs, poison and other dangerous chemicals, weapons and explosives, college degrees, torture cameras and live streams. A lifetime Netflix premium account goes for $6. You can buy usernames and passwords, social security numbers, any kind of porn that you can possibly imagine. You can communicate with terrorists and buy snuff films, which are videos of real people being tortured and killed, and even human trafficking. So there's a real moderately easy to access platform online where all of these crimes are taking place. Why hasn't the FBI, the police, or any other government agency that works towards our safety taken it down? The dark web can't be stopped because of several reasons. Here's five of them. Freedom of speech, and the fact that many of these websites are not under US jurisdiction. For example, if someone were to host a child pornography website in a country that the US does not have jurisdiction over, then the US would not be able to do anything to said website. 
except maybe block US connections, but even with that, people would access it with a proxy on Tor, so it wouldn't even be coming from the US in the first place. Those running the dark web markets are hidden behind the fine software that preserves their anonymity. It takes a lot of capital, time, and resources to investigate any one market, let alone all of them. Not everything on the dark web is illegal, Tor is used as a privacy tool as well. Payments are made in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is often described as an anonymous currency because it is possible to send and receive Bitcoins without giving any personally identifying information, which makes it extremely difficult to trace payments. Also, people operating within closed and totalitarian societies can use the dark web to communicate with the outside world. And given that nothing on the internet is ever really private, no matter how many passwords we protect it with, anything can be hacked. And so for a lot of people, they may feel it's sensible to take their online activity to the dark web. The dark web is a word to describe the bad stuff that you can find on the deep web. And the deep web isn't just something used by criminals. Encrypted servers are used by governments, various international agencies, corporations, hospitals, and individuals like you and me. There are some things that you can do that are not illegal, like taking part in a chess club or socializing on the dark web version of Facebook called Black Book. And in fact, the anonymity of the dark web makes it kind of a safe zone for individuals to exercise freedom of speech, explore ideas without interference, and even whistleblow on their companies or organizations. But it's the same anonymity that allows for the most terrible things that I've ever read about to take place. Just like the World Wide Web, the dark web is fundamentally a bunch of computers connected to each other via networks. So it's not really something you can stop or take down. Some law enforcement agencies are constantly shutting down certain dark web sites and incarcerating individuals for operating them. But beyond that, not much really can be done. Some of you might remember the 2013 crackdown of the dark web's most notorious former black market, the Silk Road, which was worth over $1 billion in sales and busted a million customers who had purchased all kinds of illegal things and services. But the dark web is still going well and strong, with countless other black market sites opening up and millions of dollars still being exchanged via cryptocurrency every day. While it's really scary and anxiety inducing for sure to talk and learn about things like the dark web, it's important that we know what's out there since it can help us navigate the world a bit safer by making us take extra precautions. A hacker stole healthcare data from nearly 10 million individuals and then listed that for sale on the dark web for 96,000 to 490,000 in Bitcoin. The sensitive information included things like patients' names, birthdays, addresses, phone numbers, and social security numbers. This kind of information is valuable because it can be resold again and again. So what does this tell us? It's letting us know that our private and sensitive information is drawing a lot of attention from hackers and causing black market buyers to purchase and sell our data for all kinds of purposes. Our healthcare providers, our banks, and the countless apps and websites that we give access to our personal data to range differently in levels of security. By being aware of how these things work and what's really out there, you can probably start to behave in a safer way online by actually reading some of the terms and conditions that you agree to, not giving up your information to shady websites just for a discount or a promo code or something like that, and being safe about online dating too, because there's countless people, especially women, who have ended up in really bad places on the dark web and off after meeting someone online or even in person and maybe trusting a little bit too much too soon. Just like most things are digital now, so is very serious crime. I wanted to shed some light on this in an attempt to promote safety and for you to not do things I've done several times, like making every single password in your life the same. Don't do that. <laughs> I know that after learning more about things like the dark web, our morbid curiosity might lead us to want to visit it. If you'd like to do that just out of curiosity, well, remember that kind of killed the cat. If you're set on exploring the dark web, I would also get a VPN, possibly a paid one, on top of using the Tor browser just to be safe since there are a lot of hackers just waiting for people who don't know how to navigate the dark web so they can hack into their computers. Some things on the dark web might look like links, but they're really not. They're actually a bug that can collect all the data from your computer. So just be safe on and offline. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button for more thoughtful content. It really helps my videos reach more people. 
Please let me know in the comments below if you would ever dare visit the dark web. If you have, how was it? Also, would you like to see a video on the entire history of you? I'm always excited to talk about humans and where we came from, so let me know. Stay curious, you guys. Give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more thoughtful content. I will see you next time. For my subscribers that have been waiting for my very promised and anticipated Q&A, it's coming very soon. I ordered some equipment for lighting and sound in an attempt to deliver really good quality for you guys since I'll be on camera for my Q&A. But some of it arrived broken and some of the things I'm still learning how to use together with new software. So in the meantime, please bear with me. Keep asking me all the questions on all things that you'd like. My Q&A is going to be massive and I'll answer all of your questions, or at least most of them. Thank you so much, you guys. I will see you next time.